Welcome to another edition of Yacht Life Chronicles where we are better together than separated. We have a legend in the building today, you know. Uh, we have the legendary DJ Ray, you know. Uh, DJ Ray been a DJ man for many, many years, you know. He has evolved and, and come from an era way before streaming. You know, he's seen this era go from 8-track CDs um, to the iPod to the streaming era. I brought DJ Ray in today to talk about the music industry because sometimes people do things in the music industry and it go unnoticed, you know. And he done a lot of things for people in the music industry that you guys don't know about that we will be just... um just just privy in you on today. So um how you doing DJ right? Hey right, brother, I'm blessed man. Glad to be sitting here with my man. Man, it's an honor. You know? Yeah, it's so an honor to be here with you. Being here, you know. You know so, and yeah, it's, it's an honor bro. man to be here with you as well, you know, because I know a lot of people don't get their flowers, man, and you one of the ones, man, that deserve the flowers that's here today. You know what I'm saying that we're giving you today. Um, you've been around a long time, man. Let's talk about the beginning, man, a little bit about how you grew up and how did you get into the music business? Like, what was the first time, you know, you 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 put your hands on the on the DJ board? You know, what was the first what was the first rap son that you started? You know, take us back a little bit. Okay, I take you back. I was came from a family of five boys. My mom was a single woman. But she raised four, four of us because my older brother, my grandmother, raised him down south. He came back. He came to wind up coming to Sangamon like in the 70s, so he's mm -hmm. much older than we were. So actually, man, I just was a kid. Mm -hmm. I was a shy kid. You yeah. know, it was, you know, all my other brothers, they all, you know, was moving around, interacting. And somehow I love music. Somehow I got to adapt to music. Yes. I remember being a kid buying my first two forty five. Mm. So I'm taking you back. You saying eight tracks, forty five? Yeah. <laughs> you you know, taking me back further than that? Yeah. yeah. You know, and I was just a kid. I never was an outspoken person, so music was my way to express myself. Mm -hmm. What I want, you know, to right. get my communication. Exactly. Right? And it was just like, man, you know, I'm still shy, but I. Just remember buying my first 245 with Michael Jackson Ben. Michael Jackson Ben, okay. And then my second 45, me and Mrs. Jones. You know, okay. I yeah, know yeah, about yeah, that about man, listen. That, all the way back me and Mrs. Billy, Jones, man. Billy Paul, so that, you know. Oh, yeah, man, yeah. yeah. It was just, yeah. just kind of, you know, it was something strange about it. Just something I just loved, you know, mm -hmm. music. You know, I was shy and I always just listen to the radio mm -hmm. and things like that. So continue growing up when I got more in elementary than when I got into um, junior high. I was still shy, but we had some, I went to I came through IP eighty. So back then mm -hmm. IP eighty had something every Wednesday called it play night. So everybody mm -hmm. can come in and interact, have fun, mm -hmm. play basketball. So I wasn't you know, I liked watch sports, but I wasn't into sports, but mm -hmm. they sometime at the end of the event we were play, you know, we have a little fun time. Mm -hmm. So I used to bring 45, so I started playing music at play night. Right, okay. So it came about that way. I never was a talker or anything. Right, shy, but, but you I, just talk, um, talk to your yeah, music. Yes, yeah, so, Man, right, so right. at the gym, I bet he one had a gym, basically one had a gym and a stage where they had a, a sound system in there that you mm -hmm. could play 45s on it. So I used to bring my 45s and I started playing music for the last 20, 30 minutes of the night. And, mm -hmm. you know, right. I didn't take it that it was on right. writing where I'm at now. Right. So, actually, I took a hobby and turned it to a career. A career. So, man, just how 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 elated was you, man? How happy and how, how festive of a feeling, man, was that, man, to bring your 45s in, man? Something new. To the to the to the game room, you know what I'm saying, to the to the socialization of the other kids and you being able to make people move and dance with your yeah, music, man. Just, you know, yo it was just you know, <laughs> so I get one I had like a couple of my 
classmate because they, I will always been shy, but they always looked out for my welfare. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't let no one, you know, right? Mess with the kids, yeah. and yeah. he yeah. played sports. And I give him a shout out right now to his name was Leonard Thomas. Okay, and my boy, I mean, coming up, people see something in you that you don't see in yourself. Mm. And that's what, and actually, I was blessed. I grew up in a village. Mm-hmm. See, people don't realize the village was important coming up in my era. Because I live next door to, to a gentleman named Reuben Daniel. If mm-hmm. anybody Google Reuben, Reuben Daniel, Daniel yeah. he was one of the first black police officers mm-hmm. in Sagma. Then I lived down the street from Marie Davis. And mm-hmm. they have a center right now on Marie the Davis. Marie Davis Center, yeah. yeah. Then Willie Thompson lived on Athens. So I grew up mm-hmm. on Athens Street. So right. I, I was surrounded. Very powerful people. people. Man, so I was honored to know all these people mm-hmm. and, you know, in my life. And mm-hmm. I was still just a kid. I only mm-hmm. been a kid that watch. I never was a talk. I always just, just right. I believe in this bringing in all right. information. Now, right, bringing in information. Listen, listen, you yeah, just, yeah, you yeah, know, being yeah. shy, you just learn yeah, to speak being through seen, your music. Yeah, being seen heard. You know, right. like then when you're a child, you're supposed to be seen, not heard. Not heard, right. So I was taking off, man, and I met another young man while I was at, out there. His name was uh, Donnie Pittman. Now, mm-hmm. now he here's in town, and we built speakers mm-hmm. before I started. That's how I more started going into the DJ. Mm-hmm. So back then, a kid, you take a little warp and start off having right. a record player <laughs> and start right. building you know, right. speakers, and they had a they used to have a skate ring on Genesee. It's called Eastside Roller Rings. A lot okay. of people don't know that. And that's usually, that was the building right across the street was the limelight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So across the street was it. That building caught on fire. So the guy gave me and this guy all the, he gave him the, all the equipment. And him and I just kind of put a little team together then. And we started off. Then once I got in high school, I met two of my other, well, one of my other friends, he lived around the corner, his name Big Rob, Rob mm-hmm. Johnson. Mm-hmm. So he stayed on Wise, where I stayed on Athens. So him and I kind of came together. Then we had another gentleman, I call him Money Merle, Rodney Merle. Mm-hmm. So that's how we came up with the thing called the Mean Mean Boogie Machine. Right. <laughs> Before it, Sweet Ray was the Mean Mean Boogie, Boogie Machine. Boogie Machine, yeah. So that was the, mm-hmm. the rags to riches. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and we just, and quickly just we, we was more like, we was promoters, didn't even know we was promoters. We, right. we gave all the events in the city. Mm-hmm. See, we loved, before we came along, it's like Kermit Crockett, all the mother yeah. DJs. Yeah. But we just came in, like, took the city by storm. So right. We just blessed, and we had people, young, you know, and our people mm-hmm. followed us. So mm-hmm. our fan base built up. Built in the study building. Man, we went to. So y'all had followers before the social media. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah man. We Many did, followers. Yeah, we yeah. Did run. <laughs> man, like we had like the bridge for a party hall. Yeah. Back then it's called Dow Vincent, but it was the mm-hmm. Saginaw Civic Center. We mm-hmm. did parties there. Okay. American Best Hall. First Ward. Right. I even go back to Civic Ten right. when we first. We got so good with the book, me, me, book me, she wanted to put a fan club together. Wow. So we started it out of the Civitan with my brother, rest in peace, Jerry Deaver. So he let us use the Civitan to have uh, meetings there. We, mm-hmm. we brought kids from all over the city, from different schools, mm-hmm. man. It was just amazing. We did fun. We had parties just about every week somewhere. Mm-hmm. Then we came up with a thing called the Mean Me Boogie Machine uh, pageant. Mm. So we came up with this pageant. What we do uh, every month, uh, that month, we had the kids, when we had a party, we stopped and we had the young ladies line up. And mm. We had people um, vote on the applauses, who get the loudest applauses. So they become that, uh, that they become the boogie machine angel for that month. Oh, so okay. it'd be January. So we started at the beginning, and then people mm. vote. So that person become Miss January of the Boogie Machine. Then she get in all the events for the whole right. Month. Okay. So then at the end of the year, what we came up with, someone came to me. We wind up ran all twelve months. Then we put a pageant together. Then we gave them a scholarship. So mm. this is the thing that kids just doing. We didn't know we right, were right. giving back and people seeing this. Right. So this was just a part of y'all personality. Yes, that they yes, doing. yeah. So we yeah. wind up. At the dollar at Simpson at the time, we wind up did a pump. We wind up having a pageant. And mm-hmm. We had young men. They they dress up like the 
with the tux and ladies had right. their dresses, so we gave a ball. Right. So we was doing things just ahead like right. of time with people that we expose our children, like people mm -hmm. with things going on. Yeah. And, you know, we if we turn our back on them, they would never know our history. When you speak of history, yeah. when you say us oh, history of three sixty five. Yeah. Like, when you speak yeah. on Black History Month, no man. Yeah. History is every day. 365. Every day, every way. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it's history everywhere. Yes, You sir. know, it's too, it's too much black history to just be able to just learn it or be able to just celebrate it in 28 days. Black history is steady evolving. Right. We talking about, you know, years and years ago. Man. But what about... Last year and the yeah. couple what, years ago, three yesterday? years. What about right? What about yesterday? Yeah. That's Black History too. Now, yes. Black History just wasn't five hundred years ago, three hundred yes. years ago. It was twenty four hours ago. Right. Yes, you sir. know, so anything in your past is your history. Amen. So how did how did how did because you was working for one hundred and seven? No, I never worked for one hundred and seven. I that was Doctor Boogie. See, everybody okay. thought I worked for 107 because I was so interact with all the DJs. Oh, the okay, so that was Dr. Boogie, Boogie. wasn't the Mean Mean Boogie no, no, Machine. No, Mean Mean Boogie Machine was out here yeah. in the street being the people. Okay, and okay. that's how everybody came along. That's yeah. why our fan base built up so strong because we was out here with the people. Yeah, you know, you opened up your race records and tapes yes. down the line. Right. I remember me. I remember I was riding my bike up there, man, from Leavitt and Burr Street, man. Me and my man Brian Smith, man. Me and my brother Brian Smith. Shout out to Brian, man. Listen, we was getting up the race records and tapes on our bike, man. Luke Skywalker, two live crew was up yes. there, man. Luke them had on the Miami jackets, man, right, with the pants yes, yes. sagging. With Luke them had their whole zipper open. Right, yeah. <laughs> hey, right. listen, they say sagging. A lot of people say where sagging come from, man. I say the first people I see do it was Luke Skywalker. <laughs> They're bad. They, they came to this city, man. They were the first people sagging. Right. You know, but I wanted you to talk to us a little bit about... Uh, you know, because that was a, a pantheon in the city of Saginaw. Right. And with your, with your, with Ray's records and tapes. You brought a lot of people here from yeah. Too Short. You yeah. helped a lot of artists get on. First of all, I'm going to give you a little more insight, some of the history okay. before Ray's record and tape. Okay. See, before Ray's record and tape, I was always, I had my, like I said, I had, we had our fan group called the Mimi Boogie Machine. So the music planet where Ray's Rucker and Tape was on East Tennessee. Right, the music planet. Before it was Ray's Rucker and Tape, it was the music Right, planet. it was. But God bless me, God turned that around. I actually worked for the music planet in 83. Wow. I worked for the music planet in okay. 83 because Carter, Carter down in Flint right now, the music planet, he, he still exists. Okay. So he was looking for a worker. Uh, he told me, let's get one of my youth from my... Uh, Fan club, right? Know, he needed a little part time worker. He said, No, man, why don't you do it? You know so much yeah. about the music, yeah. <laughs> and well, it took me. I wind up came in and I wind up got so connected. About two or three months later, he moved me down to Flint and made me the manager down at the music plant in Flint. Oh, that's what's up. <laughs> and it was just amazing, you know. He said, Man, you, you know, I love you, you know, I know you people, mm -hmm. know you trust you, know your music. Right. And it was just a gift, man, with music, knowing right. the artists and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I was blessed, you know. Right, you got the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, you know, you got to come somewhere. Like you said, you're better together yeah, than separated. separated. Right. And so he saw that in me, and that's how him and I right now today is just like brothers, you know. Right. Me and him and I, we speak, you mm -hmm. know, once a week, twice a week. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, he didn't see no competition once he... I wind up having Ray. See, Ray's record and tape started back in 1989. People don't even know that. I started mm. on Dixie Highway. Mm. I go way back on Dixie Highway when it was mm. Kelsey Grossy store. Jewel right there. See, people don't know. Jewel me. right there for Saginaw. Yeah, you know, we never knew that. Yeah, Ray's we, records and tape started you know, on Dixie Highway. You know what story is? Exactly. Back, but that used to be Kessel's. All okay. that was Kelsey Grossy. So that's when Kroger's came and bought all the French Okay. Out. And uh, on the side, in the front, with a dentist store, Ray's Records Tape started right up there in one of those suites. Wow. Yeah, so I was there for like a year, from 89 to 90. I've been okay. about a year, you know. The traffic wasn't really there. The traffic right. is so... Put the right. traffic there, but it's bypassed. Cause right. You're going right. 45, 50 miles an hour. Wow, yeah, you don't even see it. it. <laughs> right. You see it, you don't see it. Yeah. So mm. I had the opportunity... I met some people and they saw what I was doing and um, 
they saw something in me, you know, my mm. music. They said, man, you should be able to own, you should own your own business. Mm. That's how it came to me. So before I'm back, back a little more, before I open up Eastside, before I open up Rage Rock and Tape, I wind up working the music plan a couple of years. Then uh, another store came along. Right across the street from L Market called Eastside Video Music. Right, yeah. So I that's that. how Ray Truck Tape birthed from the Eastside Video the Music. Music, oh. So people, you know, it's like, wow. So, so I birthed. From, black history, y'all. <laughs> yeah, so I birthed. We got some more black history. So I birthed from Eastside Video to Ray Truck and Tape. Because I'm looking at uh, going through and I'm just dealing with daily people right. coming in. I'm doing all the transacts and I said, why would I get. Continue to make somebody else rich. If I want to suffer, I might well suffer for myself. So I'm continuing. I'm seeing if I can make a man two or three hundred thousand dollars a year. Why can't I make, make him it for myself? Right. You know? <laughs> At least half that. Yes. So that's how Rage Rock and Tape mm. came along. So I've worked at Eastside Video for maybe Rest in Peace too. That's Mr. Willie Copeland used to own mm. Eastside Video. I don't know if people knew that mm. before the line light. It was. Peter was down the street. Okay, okay. So actually, Willie owned that property. Like, okay, well, okay. Eastside Video music, Movie and Music. Okay. Then he went, look, then long, he came and bought some more property down the street. That's how uh, Lime nah, Light got started. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. By me starting, once I got located, came back to Genesee 2, Rage Wreck and Tape, it was just like, man, it just like, it was like night and day. Mm -hmm. You, man, I just blossomed, man. Right. It just, here I'm in a store with mm -hmm. 450 square feet. Mm -hmm. I'm making almost, we was gross almost $150,000 a year, man. Wow. In that list. In that spot. In that little spot, yeah. man. It just like, it just took off, man. It was just, and I remember I was going there spending a lot of money. Every time a Master P, Master P was dropping yeah. tapes week yeah. after week. I was at Ray's yeah. Record getting all them tapes, spending yeah. my $10. Yeah. Well, I mean, you back, I'm, I'm at, telling you, man, I've been supporting black businesses for a long yeah, time. I wouldn't change that for nothing, man. It was just blessed, man, that uh, I was brought into the air mm -hmm. when music was changing, like you say, when the internet and all that stuff was coming along. And they came up with the, what well, has already been out there for years, the Billboard magazine. So they came up with something for all the independent stores. Mm -hmm. So they had like a computer that runs all your sales when you sell your product. And all your products will add up at the end of the end of the week. So what you do at the end of the week on Sunday that's when uh, they call it sound scan, but it was technically ran by Billboard magazine. What they do, they pull all your sales and see what you sold. That's how they create the the top one hundred mm. sales or album or right. single. And and I became one of the most independent store in Saginaw. I was the only independent store with a sound scan, and mm. so that's how I got the honor to meet so many artists. Mm. Cause I'm selling a product. They mm. want to know who is this. Location that pushing so many right, sales. Right, pushing all these tapes out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and that's how the Dayton family bird. Mm -hmm. Dayton family was out of Flint. But I sold as many cassettes back then than some of the top string artists, naturally. Right. And I got a couple call, started getting calls and people wanted to know, who is this group? Mm -hmm. You know, we moving so, you moving so many volumes on this artist. Mm -hmm. We had to get some more input mm -hmm. on them, you know, and... I was blessed. I didn't take it was going to be that. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying helping somebody right. one yeah. hand feed another right. hand. And they happened to get the call and Andrea, lady was named Andrea from Atlanta Records and that's how they family wind up got birthed with their contract mm. with Atlanta Records and that was just awesome. And once you became a sound scan store, you became like you wanted to Top notch, you right, you reached yeah. that quota, you, right? You reached right. where you wanted to be, right? Exactly. You, when you want nobody, now you're somebody. Mm -hmm. Once you became a sound scan store, you get so many record labels at the time would call you, mm -hmm. wants you to push their artists, mm -hmm. and you know, it was just like amazing, man. They would send you free merchandise, mm -hmm. so technically, you're making 100% profit, like. 
like like you say, no limit, man. I went and had so many, you know, when the artists was out there, the label, they see you so much merchandise. They mm. see you jackets, man. Yeah. You know, <laughs> man, I had MC Hammer jacket, man. You know, oh, I, time I had time. plats, you know, yeah. man. They would just see you so you much. Had, uh, they showing you so much love. And, yeah, JT Money and the Poison Clan. Yeah, yeah, with Poison Clan. Yeah. yeah. Even when Bone Thugs Harmony first started, yeah, they did. We used to do so many in-store autographs. People just look forward to coming and raising yeah. when SWB came when they right. first got their first contract. They you had to come to all the sound scans. So mm -hmm. that's what it was set up. When you became an artist, mm -hmm. it's guaranteed you would have to stop in that city wherever it was a sound mm -hmm. scan because that sound scan store is the one who pushing your. Make that how yourself, right? Everybody. So that's how you become so important, mm -hmm. and that's how I wind up got a relationship with uh Jay Prince and you know, yeah. ghetto record, you know, right? Ghetto boys, yeah, ghetto boys, man. Yeah, so it was just, Scarface at Scar your birthday party, yeah. I had yeah. Scarface when they had a club in town called the Dynasty, club. yeah. I remember the so Dynasty, Scarface, you know, I was a little, <laughs> yeah, so Scarface was one of my special guests. He was down in Detroit, but he still drove down just to sit in with wow. me. Wow, and man, after that, and you know, when he did that, people that would pull me from left and right, right? That, that, everybody yeah. would know, how did you do that? Yeah. But you know, it was just knowing. Something about the business. Right. When you learn something about the business, man, you yeah. just amazing. Right. And then sometimes when you learn something, man, it just make you want to, it, it just enhances you, make you want to investigate it, make right. you want to do more. You know, sometimes we learn a lot of things by mistake. Amen. You know, and yes, it, 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 it galvanizes us to our destiny in life. Right. You know, it's so many careers that have been birthed by mistakes. You know, that yes. it was never supposed to happen. This is something that I bumped into, and now this is my life. Yes. You know, and I know, you know, we're a long way from, like, artists pulling up and, you know, after the pull up to the SoundCloud stores and this yes. and that. So now we in the streaming area. Yes. Things are so different. Now, right. now the artists, you know, just go on their Instagram, and we can go yes. on Zoom. And, right. You know, you it's so awesome. much different now. And... What it has done, it has pushed a, 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 a lot of artists, a lot of DJs, a lot of a lot of people that was in the entertainment business. It pushed them like kind of out the music business. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, because we have to keep evolving with it. You know what I'm yes. saying? We have to keep evolving with it. And I know a lot of people don't like the digital era that we. They be like, man, I wish we this was the eight track era, man. That you know, because it's hard. It's, it's a lot to keep up with. And then it's more. It's it's, it's so. It's just a plethora of content, plethora right. of artists, plethora of rap, plethora of music. There's so much you can't keep up with it all. And would you say that? And that's so amazing, man. I went through the era. I'm blessed that I could still be here mm -hmm. in the era because I got. I was, Say I got people in my life on my team. We on each other team. See? And, you know, I got like a brother named he. Everyone he was original from Saginaw named uh, DJ Fresh, mm -hmm. but he's one of the program directors down in Alabama in mm -hmm. Montgomery. So a lot of the music stream, you know, I and I got a buddy you probably remember, Cut Master T. Okay, out, yeah. out, of, out of Atlanta. Okay. So I got people like in that era, they kind of keeps me mm -hmm. up to date. They, yeah. You know, I could still be in that mm -hmm. area when people still call my, mm -hmm. my DJ service mm -hmm. and they be curious, they be wondering how do I keep up with the music. They look at me that say, oh, you probably, you know, yeah. it's just amazing that mm -hmm. I, I, can, I And you know what, Ray? With me, I tell people this how I stay balanced. You know, I'm 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 in my forties, so I got somebody over me that's in their fifties and their sixties and their seventies, yeah, and I got that, people. No, I'll stop you when you said I I am sixty one years old. See? You look at me, and, and people say they don't believe the age, right? But and I got people in my life that's third, that's in their thirties and yeah. that's in their twenties, and what that do is that keep you balanced. Bad. Like he said, he got friends that's. You know what I'm saying? Network. Different ages with him that he network with, and it and it helps him to evolve. Sometime in life, life and, and especially the streaming era, it's moved so fast. Yeah. It's hard to keep up with. But long as you got, and that goes for anything that you guys are doing out in in life. Long as you affiliated with ones who's associated with what you're doing, then they sometimes can help you advance by giving you the knowledge. 
you know, sometimes, you know, you can't acquire all the knowledge on your own. Amen. You know, you have to have friends. You have to have associates that you can reach out to and they can help you comprehend with certain things. You know, because I'm still lost and I'm still back in the day on certain things. I'm still in the A-track era when I need my friend to pull me up to the, to the stream in there where I can evolve. And maybe I can add to it and do something to enhance it. Yes, sir. You yeah. know? And it's just awesome. Like I said, for me to be still in the game, I have, like, you know, you have to upgrade. You got to mm -hmm. stay with it. Like, when it comes with equipment, I was always one of the person that when things came out new, I would like to be the first to have it. Even, mm -hmm. even I haven't even played with it, messed around, learned it yet. Mm -hmm. But I've always been a person, like, always be ahead. The first to have it, yeah. I've always been ahead yeah, of everything. Yeah. So I was blessed with people that, came around me saying, you know, you got this and that. You can do this and this mm -hmm. with that. So that's how I'm blessed to continue to do what I do now. Like mm -hmm. now, so, you know, I don't, I would plan this, you know. Yeah, right. You know, this, this something, you know. Right. Hey, you know, I've been mobile DJing this year, made 43 years. Man. DJing since Four. 43 years. Whoa, man, that's a lifetime. Yes. So that's a lifetime. When you, know, when you so you love, it don't get yeah. old. And, and, and now they call it, and, and now they call, and, and, I, and you know, uh, the producers, you know, you know about the digging in the crates. Oh yeah, <laughs> and it's like now with this new era. So now all you gotta do is dig in yeah, the crates, yeah, grab right. some old, and yeah. sample it, and, and, and turn yeah. it into your own. And I think that's so unique, man, because yeah. what it does is it, is it is it keeps that old music alive. Right. You know, and, you know, I see my cousin folk, shout out to what's happening folk. Yeah. And when my cousin folk go, he's working on the Anita Baker song right now. When okay. he go to digging in them crates, man, it just be so unique to me, man, to see him pull out. You know, uh, Grover Washington, yeah. Keith Washington, and yeah. you know, be able to put that that turntable on and then go to his Pro Tool man, right. and mix it up, and I say to myself, "Wow, you know." And a lot of that music is constantly being relived by the new DJs and by you DJs right. that study. You know, uh, 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 mixing and mastering that old music. Study, able to keep it alive. Yes, and when you seeing names like Anita Baker, I remember yeah. listening to Anita Baker before she was solo. So Anita Baker go way back to like 1977. She was with a group it's between 76, 78, a group called Chapter 8 out of Detroit. Wow. So when you when people think of Nita Baker, they don't know you got to go back one more. One more. <laughs> so what you think, you know, you got to go back a little further to oh, get yeah. your black history. Yeah, so man, Nita Baker had a group, started off with a group called Chapter 8. Mm -hmm. She had two songs where she was with the group, but she had parents in a song called Ready for Your Love, and she yeah. had a song, I Want to Be Your Girl. So if you go back and you look at the history, you hear where Nita Baker came from. She came from Chapter 8. Right, and right. Chapter eight. Yeah, Yes. So, right. And, so you got to do your full history. Oh, man, I just love music. Yeah. yeah. My, just not doing music before, you know, before I opened my business. I even did promotion. So I even was a promoter. So I promoted concerts and things like that, too. Yeah, so for advertising. And, and, and it all goes together. Yeah, so yeah. I brought in artists and stuff. Yeah. So I was part of, like, bringing in the blues show with me and Carter down at the music mm -hmm. thing. So when first, you know, people know him now, like when Sir, Sir Charles Jones came up. Yeah. So him and I, me and Carter was the first one to bring him in the Michigan area. Wow. Now they had a club on Saginaw Road called Buzzy. Bugsies, I in Flint, <laughs> yeah. Yes. So you know, yeah. I, so I used to the Bugsies was jumping too. Yeah, so we did a lot of shows, mm -hmm. you know. So I done blues, gospel, I done it all. So mm -hmm. I had my, I had in hands on a lot of things. So a lot of time when major promoters came to town, they always used me as a ticket outlet. Mm -hmm. So that's how I was able to interact right. and meet a lot of people yeah, that way right. because I met promoters by right. selling their tickets. And right. yeah, they he, needed he, a, he was the deity down here. Yeah, so they yeah. needed a local person even to, to distribute their information, mm -hmm. flyers. So I get my team mm -hmm. together and they go out and put the flyers out in a mm -hmm. different business. So I had a relationship with a lot of the promoters and things. So that was this. Right. Man, so it was just great. And I know that I know that I know that you DJed at the Lime Life for uh, how many years you DJ at the Lime Life? Oh man, I walked into the Lime Life. How did that? How did you even? How did yeah. that even come about? Man, Tell us that actually, story. Man, actually, was a guy named I, 
Name, brother, name, DJ, uh, he not DJ in that much time, name, D, uh, Dwayne Whittington, one okay. of my buddies. Okay. Yeah, I guess he was off one day and something happened and they needed somebody to fill in. Uh -huh. I was more like a guest of his. Okay. So you know how everybody just loved, loved them some race. So actually he kept on, you know, I just kept on, you know, kept, kept having an invite. Right. So next thing I know, hey. I'm the main attraction. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. Hey, man, one of the number one questions I wanted to ask you, man, because... And let me say for you... Ask go ahead, go ahead. When, you think, when I think about the limelight, I think about race, rock, and tape. I will open up race, rock, and tape from 10 to 8. Then if I have engagement, like another event mm -hmm. between 9 and 1... That you do it down there. I, I go no, I go do the event. Live I didn't open to one thirty. Oh morning. yeah, 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 yeah. So I would like around the clock on the right. weekend. Yeah. I would work like almost <laughs> All 18, night. 19 hours on the weekend. Wow. And I would still get up and go to church every Sunday. Everybody said, Man, I say I, I had to give God this right. I had to give That's him. been blessing. I've been blessing, man. Yeah. So that was one thing I ever I yeah. always made sure I got up and went to church on Sunday. Day. That's what's up. People went, well, how did you do it, man? Well, God yeah. do it. Woke me up, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. And I know one thing, man, we got something in common, boy. <laughs> and, well, I, well, he made me have it in common yeah. with him. Man, listen, when I'm in that limelight, man, I've been buzzed up, been smoking good, <laughs> drinking good. All he right. played this, what's up, boy, that's going to touch every spirit, every soul, every human being within that club. That Kelly Price, man. And go to Ray. Oh, my God, listen. <laughs> I, ain't, I, I I don't get tired of listening to it. He don't get tired of listening no to way. it. And he going to play it 30 times in the live line. You got to hear. Man, listen. And, 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 you know, was that one of your, you know, and then I know you was playing, you played a lot of soulful moments. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't really say that. It's funny you say that. <laughs> he played that. a lot of soulful yeah. moments. But I just wanted to say, though, man, with that, you know, because being a DJ, you got to know how to control the crowd. Yes. Man, when you played that soulful moments, man, was that a signal to all the guys, man, it's time to push up on the feet, man. Yes, sir. And it was just like, you know, they was a local group, too. They was out of Detroit. Soulful yeah. Soulful moments, so I had the opportunity to know them guys. Yeah. Here. So by me, like I said, by me being the independent store here in Saginaw, so I did get a chance. I got the opportunity to meet a lot of independent. Right. Guys. So that's why I was blessed, man. Right now, that song still one of my top ten yeah, songs. Yeah. Soulful moment. Kelly yeah. Price is going to rain. Man. And there's something about the, everywhere I go right now in this town, I still get people ask, you know, the young ladies, Ask me about that. I don't know if you. It's a one more set I used to play. It's called a twenty minute workout. When okay. The, when the women used to dance in the mirror. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So that was it. Man. Hey, listen, cause that yeah. mirror boy, that's yeah. a famous mirror yeah. right yeah. there, boy. So boy. It's like called a twenty minute yeah. workout. I still get people now that left Saginaw would call me, want copies of just that twenty minute workout. See, yeah. They work out. They do their exercise yeah. on that yeah. song. Yeah. So it's just amazing that man, DJ you don't have any lives that you touch in doing this. You know, just and, DJ. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just DJ and. You know, you um brought a lot of happiness, man. He brought a lot of peace, man, a lot of joy, a lot of love to people, man, through his music of DJing, man. Those nights, man, and being at the line, like, man, just be, you know, I go in there, you know, I have my little drink. I stand in front of the DJ booth, stand in yeah. front of right? Because <laughs> I knew the light was on him, man. I could be seen a little bit, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was just the opportunity, man. Yeah. It was just so much fun doing that. Yeah. You know, I got so much it was fun. fun for all of man, us. Man, I got Hell of an error that a lot was. Of time. It was a lot of pressure on me. But, it yeah. was, but you know, I did it for the entertainment. You know, mm -hmm. when I do my... Job, I consider that's my job. Right. So anytime people see how I am, like how you and I just mm. sit here, I'm normal. But once they say when I go do a job, they say I go into another person. They right. say it's just like an entertainer. They say because right. I used to have one person come out. Uh -huh. Hey, man, when you talk on the mic, it's just <laughs> something. I used to tell my husband I'm gonna go see my man, but yeah. me and her husband's best friend. Yeah. She so said it's just something about when you go, when you get. Do your job. You mm. turn it. To, you just turn another human being. You just an entertainer. Yeah. I said, "Well, I, I take that very personal when I come to mm -hmm. you know my job. I'm still you 110. 10 percent. Right. That's just how I always been. Like when I go 
do my events today. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure my stuff's set up right. right. It's showtime. Yeah. It's yeah. showtime. Take pride in what you yeah, do. Right. It's showtime. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I, just like Michael Jackson. It's yeah, showtime. showtime. So yeah. you got to be yeah. about your business, you know. Especially when it comes to your brand. And it, right. Because the thing about that is you want to be thorough. You know when you 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 know when you were leaving a indelible impression on somebody when you come and lay your work down. You know you want that person, that individual, when you leave there to say, "Man, they did a good job, man. Yes. He or she did a wonderful job." You know you want to let a person know you was thorough in your duties or whatever you had to do that day or whatever whatever talent that you had to perform that you was thorough all the way through that you did your job. Yes, man. I just honored because I had so many people touch my life like. It's like three generations. I had one couple I'd done their wedding maybe about 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. I wound up doing their daughter wedding. See? <laughs> then their daughter wedding, after her wedding, she called me a few years later, another down the road. She asked me to do her son open house. So it's just like the generation. Yeah. My mom. It just she, keeps going yeah, and yeah, going said, and going. My mom, everybody talk about you, DJ Ray. Mm-hmm. I don't see it. And, and right. I'll be honest, for the young people still have me in yeah. their life. So, you yeah. know, to speak yeah. on me highly, you know, yeah. I'm just honored to have that. Yeah. I share with people, it's very important how you watch, walk your step, how you walk. Walk yourself in life. And yeah. You never know who's watching you. You you don't because no matter how much, how, no matter what what you're doing, you think nobody's watching you. Somebody's out there watching. Right, you. and and someone else, you know, we're going back in while we're doing it because I wind up doing an after school program. Mm-hmm. I wind up teaching a DJ class. Mm-hmm. They came along with a program called Twenty First Century. It was an after school program, so it had different people coming in doing on hand, you know talent, whatever uh-huh. your talent was. So they had so many different programs. It's like Monday through Thursday. Uh-huh. So I would drive over the city. I go to like uh, seven elementary and three middle school. I do on hand teaching the kids how to hook up the DJ equipment, mm. learning music and stuff. Right. So, sure, the yeah, you're right. entrepreneurship. Uh, right, and learning on Right, and learning on Right, yeah. yes. A lot of times, college ain't for everybody. Yeah. So sometimes you want a skill trip. Yeah, yeah. So you need was, that. Yeah, right. So I was blessed. I had two of the young men in junior high. They wind up going off to college, and they wind up DJing at wow. college. So, how that make you feel, man? man it's just, man, that. he come back and tell me one of them in Chicago at the time. So, man, Ray... Mr. Rap, appreciate me. Man, man. Just, you know, I look at little me. Yeah. You know, he be a shy guy. <laughs> See, and we be a five Snoop Dogg for all the, 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 the little league teams he had. And he sent, you know, little yeah. leaguers to the, to, the, to, to the NFL. And DJ Wright, you yeah. know what I'm saying? He done sent people to, you know, to college, man. People being successful, man, from him showing them different skills. So we have, I don't want, because I don't want, People to always look outside their city. Like it's 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 not people right here in the city of Saginaw that's that's not doing anything. Right. You know, they there's people right here in the city of Saginaw that's doing a lot of great, a lot of helpful, and a lot of amazing stuff for people. You know that we don't know about. You know, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring DJ Ray on here today. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't want a lot of things that he's done to go unnoticed. He's still doing amazing things out here in the community. He's still DJing. He's mentoring kids. He's doing a lot of things with his life. And um, that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is your, your, your mentoring of the kids. Okay. Why is that so important? And why was that your choice of vocation that you wanted to do and give back as, as mentor to you? Actually, I was a kid and I just had the opportunity for someone to pour into my life. Mm. You know, everybody don't get the opportunity for someone to pour in your life. Mm-hmm. So I had that opportunity best being around people saw something in me that mm-hmm. I didn't see in myself. And I had the opportunity to give back. Mm-hmm. And it was just so important. My mom, that was very important. My mom, I don't know, was five of us, but my mom raised four. But she, I guess she always saw something in me. I always been that shy, quiet guy. Mm-hmm. But she the one was on me so hard. I guess she saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. Right now, the day my mom passed in um, uh, January the 3rd, 2021. So actually, that pandemic year was a whole mm-hmm. lot of loved ones left mm-hmm. us. But my mom always been me. I always wanted why she was so hard on me. Because out of five kids, I'm the middle child, but... I'm the first one even to graduate from high school. Mm. 
I'm the first one to go to college. Mm. So, you know, she had something, she instilled something in me that I needed to push for the family. And that was so important. So, you know, everybody had heroes and sheroes come up. So my mom was my shero. My mom was my That's hero. So it doesn't have to be national for someone to believe in. You know, a lot of us back then, it didn't have to be Magic Johnson. I had like some of my uncles and things, aunties that I looked up to. Mm -hmm. They which were on right. hand. Right. That you could talk, talk to. to touch, right. Yeah. Right. right. So yeah. you got that people in your mm -hmm. life you got on hand. Mm -hmm. And I always wanted like when I was a kid in elementary, my mom would send us down south because my mom was from Union Spring, Alabama. So I wonder why my mom would send us down here to the country, but she was balancing us. Mm. So when we go down south, you ain't have running water. Mm. You had to go to the well. Mm -hmm. So a different thing like that, you had to teach you an organic way of living, right? So, yeah, yeah. Of what we done got away from, right? right. So yeah. I learned to be, you know, it was like balancing, and right? Like, man, and I thank her for that. Now, and yeah. I should share with you, mm -hmm. you don't know how blessed we are, where you even came from, what our ancestors, exactly, to, what what they had to go through yeah. to get to where you are, You're to right. get you where you are, exactly. So you should appreciate that, yeah. My, right. Yeah. So do you think why? Why do you think? Because it's an epidemic of the younger generation not respecting or not giving their their due diligence to the older generation and the path that they have paved for them. You know, and being a marketing, advertising, being in an entertainment world, DJ and knowing everything basically about the business. You know, so if I'm if if I was getting to the entertainment world, I wanted to DJ, I wanted to do this. The first person I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in my history and see who was doing it, you know, in my city. And I would, and who been doing it the longest. And that's who I would want to link up with right. to be up under their tutelage so it will enhance my skills. But now today, it seems like that philosophy has evaporated. It seems like going to your OG, you know, learning things from your OG who been doing it he or she been doing it for 43 years, 30 years, and this many years. And the older gener the younger generation is not respecting it. You know, a door that I have opened. You know, why do you think, give me your thoughts on that, and, and what do you think about that? Well, give me, you say this, you know, I can say dealing with a situation like that, um, it's, it's very important that someone crack that door mm -hmm. so you can see. Mm -hmm. Then eventually someone will open, will go to the door and let you in. Mm -hmm. And I had the opportunity, like when you're speaking on my history, but I have said there's been a lot of DJs that fall under my umbrella that gave me gives me my respect. Mm -hmm. So not all of them don't give you your respect, mm -hmm. but some of them does. So when you grow, so when you, when you was growing up DJing and you got your hands on that first tape, turntable, was there anybody, any of the pioneers that was before you that you went and, and, and connected with well, and learned from? Yeah, well, actually, it was more like on hand or mm. just watching because mm. back then you didn't have to do a lot to mm. just be a DJ, just, mm. you know, MC wasn't mm. as open like it is mm -hmm. now. So I happened to see like Kermit Crockett, Claude mm -hmm. Bell. Claude mm -hmm. Bell used to do the oldies on mm -hmm. Saturday morning. You know, people used mm -hmm. to clean up their house and things mm -hmm. like that. So Kermit Crockett, it's mostly the 107 DJs. Mm -hmm. I wind up getting a good relationship with mm -hmm. you guys. Right now I see the ones that still living right now, I still have their number right. in my phone. So I, I call them time to time. Yeah. So when they do the 107 uh they have the 107 um, annual mm -hmm. party, whatever yeah. the big event. They include me, yeah. but I'm a street job. Exactly. But they include me, Good which is I'm yeah. part of the city. So. Exactly. And a lot of the other DJs that fall under, you know, that saw me and came through me with give me my credit, like DJ Prince, all these yeah. guys. Shout like, out DJ Prince. Yeah, like man. DJ Shout Prince. out to all DJs. Yeah, all my man. DJs. Yeah, I call yeah, them no, the, jock, so. the jocks on the block. Yeah, jock, shout out to all the jocks on the block. So, man, man I can just name them all, mm -hmm. man. They all still give me my respect yeah. and credit. I appreciate all that, yeah. you know. So. Because at the end of the day, you, you, you know, you got to give your elder their respect. 
You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, they paved the way. They moved some things out the way to make it so you can be able to come through and be able to, you know, be ingenuity with your craft and with your art. You know, without people like DJ Wright opening the doors and knowing the business, there will be no us and, 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 and other people like DJ Princes and different yeah, DJ, 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 DJ Zeke, Zeke, you know what I'm saying? Saying? Jack Master Ray. Yeah, yeah. Jack Master, that's one of my main men, Jack Master. Yeah. And I can go back to DJ Tony Boone, all these yeah, guys. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I was back then, I was one of the first DJs to own 1200 Technique. So those was the main D turntable that Quit, they used. Yeah. In New York, to entertain those, yeah. those turntables so expensive back in the day. I was just blessed to save money to buy a set yeah. of those. So actually, I was the first one before Run DMC even started. <laughs> Run DMC, we the first one bringing Run DMC to Saginaw. We brought him to the CAC hall. Oh. Brought him to the skate ring in Flint. We had him for the whole weekend. Mm. So back then, so I had blessed to been around a lot of things and saw a lot of things people don't know. Then right. by you calling and. As for this interview, this brought all the history. Yeah. It, it just started falling in and my lap. So and that's the I thing. had it all boiled in, like you said. Right. Like take yeah. the top and unboil it and let it come Yeah, out. yeah, <laughs> man. And you done done way too many things for this city, man. As far as in the entertainment world, the business world, you know, um, um, I'm sharing your entrepreneurism with the kids, you know, opening up skill trade for the kids, you know, kids going out there to college, man, yeah. you know, I, you know, I could not let it go unnoticed, I you know, and, and, and I'm going to bring some light to it and, and we're going to share some light on everything you're doing, you know. On this show, man, we're about giving people their flowers, you know. Yes. And, and and like I say, sometimes, you know, life could be moving so fast and people get, you know, they get sidetracked of the ones that help, that's that's pioneers in this city. Yes. You know, and you're one of the pioneers, man. And I just want to say thank you, you oh, know what I'm thank saying? Thank you. For, you know, everything that you've done for this city of Saginaw, man. Because without you, no telling where a lot of us will be at. <laughs> right. I was there uh, last week at uh, Gibson, Gibson Church. Okay. Bishop uh, Chad Atkins. Called. They, Chad, yeah. Shout out to Chad, Chad Atkins. Yeah, so he gave One of my boys. So I wind up with a plaque. They, gave, they honored me, too, at their church for Black History Month, which I didn't know. And he called me. Actually, I was black just history, right? A lot of black history right here in your own city. So actually, I was just playing just to play the music for the black history dinner, but I was honored that day too at a service. Wow! Shout out to chat for and, that. And there's so many other you know independent things that community in the city coming like the Boondock mm. reunion. I does that every year. I'm right. Here. So I was. I'm a part of that. Right. And right now I sit. On so what he's saying, he's well knitted in the community. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. He's well knitted in the community. Yeah, so I sit on three nonprofit boards right now. Mm. So I'm the chairperson for Gospel Fest with Vicky Hill that we mm -hmm. give every year at Jitway Island. So okay. I'm a part of that. So I've been part of that for the last 16 years. So we bring, you know, bring different major artists to the island. So I'm, you know, I'm blessed to be a part right. of that. Then the last four or five years before the pandemic, we was blessed of my man out of, he's not in Bay City no more, but Corey, Corey Carr, he donated us a car each year to bless a family. Mm. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, only thing you had to do is write a letter, tell them why this such a party individual need this right. vehicle and we bless them. Bless them with a car. We gave them a car title, full title, everything and you know, and you know it's about giving back. Right. You know, the more you give the more it'll come to you. There you go. So I would learn. That's a jewel for you Yeah, guys. so I learned, you know, to give, give back. back. So, yeah. you know, I sit, like I say on the Gospel Fest board and I got a health formation mm. board that I sit on. So it's about teaching our people, you know, the sickness and different things. So we can give an annual jazz R&B every year. So we got that coming up May the 7th, I believe, mm -hmm. at the Dial Event Center. Mm -hmm. So I'm a part of that. Mm -hmm. So I'm one of the chairperson for that organization, too. Okay. So, you know, quiet is kept. I do believe in giving back, and I don't believe I got to stand out front to mm -hmm. see, to show my work. Right. So right. I believe in pushing others. Right. And just just have like, a genuine heart, man. Yes. Legendary individual I'm sitting there to see, too, man. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, man, he, he, he got a hell of a legacy. 
You know what I'm saying? He has a hell of a legacy for himself. And, you know, you guys can learn a lot from DJ Ray, man. Just always being able, always moving his feet, never standing still. You know, um, but before we get out of here, man, you know, the theme of my show is we better together and separated. Yes. And give me, give me get some of your thoughts on that. Oh, man, we already together. We sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> there and, it is. And when you just done your other interview, I listened to it. I said, that's so important. We mm -hmm. are better together. Because mm -hmm. why not be together? Why be on the outside when we can come together? In peace, harmony, and in love. And being together is like a recipe. You bring a part of the recipe, I got a part. You know, like a cake, you need ingredients. So we are the ingredient. That's why it's better together than separate. <laughs> <laughs> Man, great philosophy. And um, and like I say, um, on this show, Y'all Life Chronicles, because after the Black History Show, a lot of guests on the show say that we need to start celebrating Black History all year long. So... On this show, we celebrate Black History all year long. Black History will not just be celebrated 28 days a month. In the month of February, we'll be celebrating all year long. So, I wanted to ask you, um, DJ Wright, what does Black History mean to you? Man, Black History means the color of our skin. Meaning that what we, what we came from, our family. It's, family is very important. And Knowing your history, history started at home. Mm -hmm. Then history go outside the door because before, before you went outside, you have to know your own history. Your history started in your home. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know your loved one, how can you go out there and share things about others? Mm -hmm. So if you don't know your history from the in-house, you can't take it out the house. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we start educating in-house. Yes. So our kids can know our hit day history when they go out the house. Yes, sir. But if we don't never teach them any history in the house, they don't know no history. They don't. They not go. They don't know their purpose. They don't know where they come from. True. You know they don't. They don't. <laughs> they don't know their background. And when, and when you say it, it's so important, like right now, I have a my granddaughter. She's in her second year at U of M. Uh -huh. So she got so she has a full ride. At UL. Ooh, that's a blessing. Man, I, by me doing this, you know, we entrepreneur doing this business, I got like three three of my kids and went through college. So, mm -hmm. you know, so I took a hobby, like I say from the beginning of the interview, a hobby to a career. <laughs> so it paid for my daughter. She didn't graduate from Central Michigan. I got a daughter graduate from Western Michigan. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a granddaughter now at UL. Mm -hmm. Just amazing, man. Having them, having them, <laughs> having that Midas touch, having them hands, man, them DJ hands, man, and took him in and created opportunities. Him just being a DJ and created so many opportunities for his kids, other kids, putting people through school, college. He's out here mentoring kids. He done been able to help stars get contracts, you know what I'm saying, through a sound scan store. You know, this man is just a man that's that, that has a genuine heart at the end of the day. It's one of the reasons I wanted to bring him to the show, man, because he's just a genuine hearted individual. Never have heard anything bad about him. All good things. All heard all good things about the guy. You know, man, and DJ Ray, man, we just want to thank you, man, for what you have contributed to this city, yeah. man, as far as the music and entertainment I world. I appreciate it. I want to thank you. You just continue doing what you're doing because I heard about it, didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. but thank you. Thank but you. I know what's going on now. And I am a part of this. And yes, it is. A part of it. Yes, it will. Day, all day. And I tell people, it's not, and when you come to the show, it's not a wham bam, thank you, ma'am. So once the interview is over, we don't see each other no more. We locked in now. We family. Yes, sir, because you, you've been calling me trying to get this interview. Yeah. Day in, day out. And I just yep. took the time and I just honored just to be here to show you, man. I love what you're doing. You continue doing what you're doing. We definitely love it. We're going to let the country know where we are. Saginaw, Michigan. Saginaw, Michigan, man. <laughs> and, and, and you all, and, and, and on that note, you on any uh, uh, social media? Yeah. I Can people my, contact you anyway? Yeah, most people know me on Facebook. I have my Yahoo. And email. what's your Facebook? Uh, Ray Pearson. Okay. And then my email is djsweetray at yahoo.com. Then I have Gmail, ray.pearson61. There you go. So, so there you I, go, man. I, I and, have an Instagram, but my I can't think of it right off hand. But I think it's Ray Ray. 
Right, right. Yeah. Okay, right. we're we'll trying to figure it out. <laughs> yes, sir. But uh, man, just before we get out of here, man, we want to get his last words, man, and and and, and whatever he just want to say to you guys, man, and before we get out of here. But it definitely will be a part two coming soon. <laughs> yes, sir. My final word. I just want to say thank God, man. You know what he had done, what he continued doing for me. And what he does for me, I does for my people, and I just love on my people. Sometimes you just have to love hard on our people, you know. Mm. I was at service, lady, my pastor preached, say, pray hard, pray long. Mm. And, and that's what I do. I just learn to pray, pray hard, pray long. Pray on my people, <laughs> man. I, that's all we can do. That's all we can do, man. And uh, like I say, man, you know, in life, you know, sometimes we take on careers by mistake. Sometimes we may take on a career by accident. Yes. And we might just bump into it. Sometimes a career might just fall in our lap. And we and, and once we take advantage of some of the things that has fallen in our lap, we never know the beacon of light that we can be in other people's life. We never know the impact and the and the and the and the positivity that we can bring to other people's life by helping them be successful and them helping helping them get to their accomplishments of, 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 of conquering their dreams and champion life. You know, so we want to thank DJ Ray for coming in here and uh, dropping the jewels, man, giving us the history, man, a lot of black history today. You know, so I want to thank you guys for tuning in to another edition of Yacht Life Chronicles where we are better together. Then separate. Thank you for tuning in. YLC. <laughs> Thank you. Yes.